Hello everyone, Tuesday's video from Celtic AM as we gear up for tomorrow night's big game against Dundee. If you're anything like me, there's a fair chance you've been dreaming of a settled centre-back partnership at Celtic and probably Carter Vickers and Orotsky being the, the two names in your head. Um, well, bad news on that front with regards to Wednesday night because that's not going to be possible due to injury. But before you absolutely panic about Carter Vickers being injured, um, it's actually Mike Narotsky who's uh, unfortunately picked up um, yet another injury this season. This has been reported by the uh, Daily Record who say that Narotsky will miss Wednesday's clash against Dundee and potentially more matches. Now, he didn't train uh, at Lennox Town yesterday and he's been receiving intensive treatment, whatever that means. Uh, it's said to be a leg issue and we're still waiting to find out the full extent of it. But the bottom line is Mike Naropski is not going to start against Dundee tomorrow night. Um, I'm guessing that means that it will probably be Carter Vickers uh, alongside Liam Scales. Maybe CCV won't be ready to start a game and Rodgers may err on the side of caution there. He could play Stephen Welsh and Liam Scales together. That's maybe not gone great recently. That Kilmarnock game probably still fresh in people's minds. So I'm I'm guessing that it's going to be Carter Vickers Scales tomorrow. Uh, and it's just a little bit frustrating, isn't it, that we're not really able to get like a kind of settled centre-back partnership together. Maybe that will be Carter Vickers and Scales as things go on, um, but I just get the impression that maybe Carter Vickers and Narotsky is certainly what the majority of, of fans would like to see. Um, I don't think Narotsky has been um, has been like brilliant so far. I thought he kind of started the season quite well and then obviously had a quite a lengthy injury, didn't he? It was a, a hamstring injury, missed maybe three, four months of the season. And, um, yeah, when he came back, it was a struggling Celtic team. He's, he's come back into it. I think he struggled himself. I thought even on Sunday, um, you know, in that first half, he struggled a bit. Um, arguably not as much as, as Liam Scales, to be fair. But, yeah, it's, it's a blow for him. Um, it's, it's a blow for Celtic. But I do think that as long as we have Carter Vickers as one of our two centre-backs, um, things should be all right. I feel like... Carter Vickers would improve scales, he'd improve Narotsky, he'd improve Stephen Welsh. He'd improve Lager Bielka, if you still remember that guy. Um, he's there as well. I doubt he's going to be playing for us before the end of the season. But that's the, the big kind of team uh, update ahead of Wednesday night's game. As I say, we'll go in depth in that match tomorrow. Predicted 11, all of that kind of nonsense. Um, just on the the lack of consistency in the Celtic starting lineups. This season, I did see a, an interesting thing from uh, Celtic Stats and Trivia on that wonderful website uh, X that it's now to be called. So, yeah, this is um, what it is. It's a little bit um, tough to get your head around at first, I would say, but clearly a lot of time's gone into this uh, from Celtic Stats and, and Trivia. So I'd probably give them a follow. Don't worry, it's not my account or anything. I'll tell you if it was. Um, so yeah, what the hell is this? Well, this is 30 different lineups that Brendan Rodgers has named this season. Uh, and that's only over 36 competitive fixtures. So 30 different lineups in 36 matches is obviously a hell of a lot of change. I'm not sure on the numbers from last season, but you think back to last season and you could kind of name... I don't know, at least nine members of Ange Postacoglu's starting lineup, um, kind of off by heart. There was no discussion to be had. And maybe a couple of positions, like a wing position or a midfield position, were up for some sort of debate. But generally, you knew the team and it was very settled. And I think we reaped the benefits as a result. Um, this season has obviously been very difficult. And that's not all down to like Brendan Rodgers just deciding to change the team. I think there's definitely an element of him not knowing his strongest team. I'll be honest with you all, I still don't think he knows his strongest team and we're just about to go into March. There's obviously you know, been a huge issue with injuries. We've been really unfortunate. We've literally just mentioned an injury to Mike Narofsky there. It's kind of been like that all season and to some very key players and lengthy injuries as well. And there's also been the whole thing about recruitment. I think, 
you know, Rogers is given opportunities. Um, maybe not an, a lot of opportunities in some cases, but he has given opportunities to new signings who just haven't really been up to it. Um, and that's obviously impacted the, the change we've seen in these uh, these starting lineups. So yeah, um, that's what we've got there. So uh, the kind of main numbers you see there are obviously squad numbers. Uh, this is actually an order of the squad number rather than the game, if that makes sense. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the games that the lineup was used for are what you see on the, the right hand side there. So, yeah, as the tweet says, we've only named the same starting 11 in three consecutive games once. Now, that was games 11, 12, and 13 of the season, which were Kilmarnock at home, which we won, Hearts away, which we, we won really emphatically, and Atletico Madrid at home, where we, we earned a pretty credible draw. Now, is that just me, or is that the kind of best period we've had this season and the best Celtic have looked over a couple of matches? I think back to you know, that Kelly game was a good performance, 3-1 win, I think it was. Tynecastle really polished performance, arguably our best of the season. And obviously that Atletico match as well against a higher level of opposition. We really acquitted ourselves well and, you know, deserved a draw in that match. And that was with three kind of consecutive lineups. Now, the, the team that he actually named uh, for those games, I've just got it quickly. So it was Joe Hart, um, Johnson, Carter, Vickers, Scales, Taylor, O'Reilly, McGregor, Hitati, Maida, Palma, Kyogo. And he would actually pretty sure he would have named the same team for the fourth game, which was against Hibs, after Atletico had Hitati not picked up an injury uh, seven minutes into that game against Atletico Madrid. So that's kind of what we've been dealing with this season. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, what does this tell us? Well, it tells us we've had a lot of change this season in our starting lineups, And also, I think it suggests to me that finding consistency um, and a, a consistent starting lineup that Rodgers is happy with is pretty important between now and the end of the season. Now, I have my doubts whether we'll find that. I still think there's just so many positions in the team that you can't be certain about, like the wing positions. It's just like a kind of revolving thing, revolving door, I guess, um, you know, match to match. You know, oh, he did well, and we're now having it with Yang. And yeah, Yang did look good at the weekend and, you know, certainly is a better option than Kuhn right now. But, like, are any of us certain that Yang's going to be the right winger for the rest of the season is going to keep going? I'm praying he does, but, like, I wouldn't be surprised if in a few weeks there's, like, a call to maybe... Um, you know, put Palma back in or, or something like that. And the forward d department, you know, Kyogo or Ida, that's suddenly a debate there. Um, hopefully in the, the kind of defensive positions, we can find a bit more consistency with, with Johnson and Taylor and Carter Vickers now back. But yeah, I think Rodgers has to try and find a consistent team and really run with it, um, certainly for a, a few weeks. Um, because, you know, the evidence is there for me at the start of the season, those three matches. That was when Celtic looked probably the best we've looked all season, and it was with a, a consistent lineup. There's just been too much chopping and changing uh, since then, to be honest. And as, as I repeat, part of that is down to, you know, injuries. But, um, yeah, I think um, I, I want to see a settled team going forward. I really think that will make a difference. And hopefully, when Hitati comes back in a few weeks and maybe. Um, you know, he can, you know, get involved and really contribute and get back to that kind of solid midfield that, that served as well last season. So, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting thing to, to bring up. You can let me know your, your thoughts on that. Um, maybe I'm talking a whole load of nonsense. Um, what about Ben Segrist then? Because the, the report last night, again, from the Daily Record, saying that Aberdeen uh, are considering a move for Segrist in the summer. Uh, said to be on a short list to replace Kel Roos, the current Aberdeen number one who's out of contract this summer. Segrist himself uh, contracted at Celtic until the summer of 2026. He signed a four-year deal when he joined the club, so he's still got what... Uh, oh God, two and a half years to run something like that. He's clearly not gonna like feature as Celtic's first choice goalkeeper. It's been a bit of a, a strange sign, and I mean, hardly like hardly an absolute shambles. Probably doesn't even make the the top ten from the last couple of seasons. But um, 
yeah, I kind of expected a bit more. It's obviously not happened. And I'm kind of surprised that there's talk about Aberdeen. I would be surprised if he, he went there. I thought the chat was that he was going to move over to wonderful, glorious Australia, um, where his, his girlfriend, I believe, lives. So I, I feel like that's probably the more likely option. Um, as I say, he's clearly not got any sort of future at Celtic next season, um, even though Joe Hart's moving on. So yeah, Aberdeen or Australia, it's a, it's a tough one for Ben Segrist to, to weigh up, I'm sure. But that's the latest with him. Uh, final thing I want to bring up, St Mirren said to have opened talks with Celtic uh, with a view to extending Huku Kwon's loan deal into next season. Kwon, obviously, on loan at St Mirren, has been since January. is apparently doing very well, has been a real hit in Paisley and it takes a lot to be appreciated in Paisley believe me um, so will he stay with them next season etc well Stephen Robinson says he's someone we'd really like to keep we're speaking to Celtic about it perhaps keeping him for another season with ourselves we'd be very keen to do that but he isn't our player and that won't be our decision uh, I'm guessing we'll want to have a look at Quan in the summer uh, before maybe making a decision over what happens. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he has apparently been very good with St Mirren, a, a real hit there, as I say, but, you know, that's obviously no guarantee of him, you know, making it at, at Celtic. Um, it's still a, a huge difference there. But, yeah, we have had players in the past who have gone out and loaned to teams that excelled and come back. I know Ryan Christie and Callum McGregor are maybe obvious ones people would bring up. Um for me, you know, Christopher Ayer is probably quite a good kind of comparison with Quan. Came to the club quite young. Maybe Ayer was a good few years younger, but they're still relatively young players. Ayer spent, I think, maybe a season on loan at Kilmarnock. Stood out as a pretty good player, similarly to, to what Quan is or how Quan is doing at the moment. And Ayer obviously came back to be a, a successful Celtic first team player. Is Quan at that kind of level? The jury's still out for me, but he's certainly doing well at, at St Mirren and it's it's one I want to keep an eye on. Um, if the club do decide to loan him out for another season to St Mirren, again, that's not something uh, I would be against, to be honest. He's still you know, young enough and it's probably good to, to give him another season acclimatising to Scottish football. Uh, I always thought it was interesting that we loaned him out to St Mirren rather than like back to Asia like we've done with a lot of the, the players we've signed, even like Marco Tellio has been loaned back here to Melbourne. And it kind of seems like, um, you know, he's not got much of a future, uh, just from the perception of, like, if you feel like you'd maybe have loaned him to another Scottish team if we had high hopes for the future. Um, I could be wrong, but I just think the Quan loan into another Premiership team was interesting. As I say, it's it's one to, to keep an eye on. Just on Tellio, by the way, I'm guessing we also has a brilliant goal for Melbourne City at the weekend, real pacey, uh, counter-attacking, classic goal. Uh, check that out if you've not seen it. I'm making no grand statement about whether Tellio would be shining for Celtic right now, but what I will say is that goal was uh, a breathtaking goal and maybe something that we're not really capable of ourselves at the moment. Anyway, um, that's your lot for today. Tomorrow, we'll really look ahead to the game against Dundee. I'll be joined by another human as well, and it's not Stevie. So, yeah, brace yourselves for that. Uh, we'll look ahead to the match in midweek. Uh, and if you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel as well. I think we're about 2,500 in now. So, yeah, good to have you all aboard. Chat to you this time tomorrow.